vulnerable virtual machine. All right, so practicing your skills always helps you in your career and your personal life, but here we're just going to stick with your professional life, right? So, there are many ways for you to gain the knowledge of web application penetration testing. You can read blogs, and you watch courses, and you participate, you watch videos, and so on and so forth, but nothing will ever beat actual hands-on experience in order to improve your skills. Hands-on experience allows you to understand the procedures and methods of securing web apps. So you're going to get your hands dirty to get more out of this course. And it's a good thing, because you know what? Muscle memory. That's all I'm going to say. Now, to accomplish everything that we've been talking about, you must have a vulnerable web application so that we can try to build that lab, right? Of course, you can develop a web app by yourself, but it's not necessarily reasonable when you're new to web vulnerabilities. So you must first exploit and learn what the vulnerabilities of web applications might be and what they look like. So as web penetration testers, it's vital to be aware of real-world applications, which are very diverse in many, many ways. They're built with various technologies, and each of them can be served up differently. So, to be prepared for testing, we should practice and improve our skills. Stands to reason, right? Now, thanks to our security community, we can find many intentionally vulnerable web applications on which to practice. So, that means that we can download these applications' source code and then use them in our environment. Also, there are some pre-built virtual machines that contain these applications already. And by using these virtual machines and applications, that way you ensure that you have a safe environment in which to work. Beatbox. Now, I didn't say beatbox, although that would be fun. But I just want to let you know that you can develop your attacking skills identify and exploit vulnerabilities in web applications with this. This is an OWASP project called Vulnerable App Directory Project. And it holds and categorizes ah, pretty much almost everything for us. Most of the vulnerable applications can be found in this project. Now, here are many options when you need vulnerable applications in virtual machines. Now, thanks to the community for this purpose, many buggy apps are developed. So that means it's intentional. Mm -hmm. You can find and review a list of all known vulnerable web applications here. And if you're not necessarily comfortable using an already built configuration, of course, you can create your own vulnerable system from the very beginning. Some developers, that's what they do without even knowing it. I'm just kidding. All right, so I need to be honest with you. Um, when I was first planning out this course, I was planning to create a vulnerable machine from the very beginning by myself and have you do it as well. As I've said, I really do believe that this has many benefits in order to learn application deployment process at the very least. But as I already told you, what I decided was it's too time consuming and it certainly isn't for beginners. So for that reason and others, we're not going to do it that way. In this course, we're going to use a prepared virtual machine called BeeBox. Okay, so BeeBox contains the buggy application BWAP. Buggy web application, in case you're wondering. Therefore, we are going to play with the BWAP in this course. So it's based on PHP, and it runs on the MySQL database server at the back end. It has three levels of security, low, medium, and high. And each level demands different skills. So it covers all risks from the OWASP Top 10 project with all major known web vulnerabilities, such as XSS, CSRF, SQL injection, file injection, upload flaws, and many more. So at any time, you can easily reset the database if you figure that you want to start over again. And it comes with a simple, straightforward interface. Alas, don't let that deceive you. 
because it's only for learning purposes. Now, another great feature, you can also view the vulnerability in the source code. So it means that you don't really need to try something blindly like a script kitty. You can observe and measure what you're doing by looking at the source code. Okay, anyway, let's just install this box into the lab. So open up your favorite browser, and this time type BWAP, and follow the first link from the results of the search. And here we are at the official website of the owner of the application. And now we can go to the download page. Click the link below to download BBOX. And you will be redirected to sourceforge.net. So click here to download and save the file. Download will take a few minutes. And this time I am absolutely sure that I'm not going to record the entire download process. Okay, so after the download finishes, go to your download folder. And what do you know? Here is the downloaded file in 7-zip format again. So let me just close the browser so that you can have a clean view. Okay, so right-click on the file, extract the files. I'm going to extract it to a new folder under the previous folder that I created for virtual machines at the beginning of the course. And I'll wait a few seconds until the extraction finishes. All right, so the extraction is done. Let's go to the folder. And here are the files. And double-click on the file with this VMX extension. And now the virtual machine will start in full screen automatically. And again, we're going to come up against this warning. And just click on I moved it. And continue. Okay, so now in a few seconds, the B box will start. And here is the desktop environment of our virtual machine. And I'm going to offer congratulations yet again. You have imported a vulnerable machine into your lab environment. Good job. All right, so now we have imported the pre-installed BWAP virtual machine. It's also possible to download the application code itself and use it, but we're not going to do it that way. So one thing to keep in mind, these kinds of applications are, <laughs> they're damn vulnerable. Don't upload them to an internet-facing server. They will be compromised. So believe me, I did it once for experimental purposes, <laughs> and it did not take any time at all for it to be hacked. Now, in case you think I'm giving you permission to do that, again, just make sure that you set it up in a secure environment. 